Guys, I've spoken to so many scientists about it, even who have done it. You see their comments. Very few of them would be able to tell you what exactly is the difference between retrospective cohort and case control. Most people confuse here. Everyone can tell you the difference, prospective and retrospective cohort. That in prospective cohort, you go into the future, but in retrospective cohort, you go into the past. But very few people will tell you what is the difference. What is the difference between retrospective cohort and case control? Remember, in retrospective cohort, you don't know the disease. You don't know the risk factor. In case control, you know the disease, but you don't know the risk factor. Sampling is done on the basis of risk factor. You found those people who were who were exposed to a risk factor, but you don't know what that risk factor was. Or probably you knew, probably you knew, but there was a risk factor. But the main thing is you did not know about the. You are easily now in 0.1% of scientists who know the difference between prospective and retro. Then the next two, study number two, 2A and 2B. Randomized control trial, non-randomized. They are known as clinical trial. Randomized control trial will always have two groups, control and the treatment. And the non-randomized study will have only one treatment group only. So in randomized control trial, you give an intervention and you look at the after effects of that intervention to one group and the other one gets the market treatment or gets no treatment or gets placebo. Three possibilities. The control group can get three possibilities. A placebo treatment, that is a fake treatment, or a market treatment that is already famous or no treatment at all. And you will see what happens in the future. But the difference is here you are giving something. That's it. You are giving something to the patient. In non-randomized control trial, you are giving something to the patients too. But there are no control groups, only one group. And under what circumstances do we do non-randomized control? When you are testing surgical procedure, you cannot test a surgical procedure on healthy people. Let's say you develop a surgical procedure for brain tumor patients. You selected 25 brain tumor patients. You use that surgical instrument. You corrected their brain tumor, right? Now, do you think you will do the same procedure on healthy people and open their skull and do their surgery? Can you? Can you open the head of a healthy person and unnecessarily do a surgery? when there is no tumor. Can you do a placebo surgery? <laughs> no. Possibly you can, that they think that they are having a surgery, but they are actually. Yeah, you cannot open their head. You will lose your license. Clinical trials are done in a hospital, most of the time, or clinics, or rehabilitation center, where you'd give some medication, a vaccine, a surgical procedure, whatever. Whenever it's a surgical procedure, most of the time it will be a non-randomized control. If it's a medical treatment, it, it is a randomized control trial. You will have two groups. See how beautiful it is now? One, two A and two B. And People think that clinical trials are the strongest. They're still number two. And clinical trials are also known as experimental studies or experiment or intervention. Sampling is done on the basis of, on the basis of what? A disease or you just select patients, not necessarily on a disease. You create a predetermined criteria that, okay, we will collect these kind of patients and we will give them medication. That's it.